Today I am going to be demonstrating how to glaze an oil paint by painting this giraffe in oils over acrylics. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. At the time of recording this video, he's not finished yet. But don't worry, by the time the end of this video comes, he will be completed. I need about two more layers of oil paint from this stage to finish him up. If you are wondering why I paint in oil over acrylic, I do have a video explaining that. I will have a link pop up here so you can check that out. For this guy, I worked on a Fredericks Blue Label Ultra Smooth Canvas. I painted everything in acrylic. I airbrushed my background with a stencil, painted him in acrylic in just black and white so that when I started glazing in oil, it would really demonstrate well what that glaze is doing. Plus, it saves so much time to paint it first in two tones like that and then put the color on top after. Apparently, it didn't save enough time for me to have him finished up by the time I recorded the intro for this video, but whatever. If you are supporters over on Patreon, I do have the one hour version of this tutorial available for you guys now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now, let's get on to this tutorial. I've started by painting my canvas black with Liquitex Basics Mars Black. I added titanium white on top of that, blended it out, and used a stencil to airbrush the background in. My drawing was drawn on another piece of paper and I used white transfer paper to transfer the image onto the canvas. Painted it solid gray, then used that other piece of paper with the transfer paper yet again to draw out the details onto my subject. And I have a video showing you how to do that. I'll have a link pop up so you can check that out. I'm using a number three round brush for almost everything else for painting the underpainting on this giraffe. And see, I'm blocking in all of the black colors first. I don't care if everything's perfectly smooth, it just doesn't matter at this point because I'm going to go on top of this with oil. When I do that, that will smooth and soften all of my lines out. So if I've got a little bit of dry brushing, my edges are harsh, no big deal at all here. I just wanna block out approximately where everything goes. I'm using a stiff round brush to soften out some of the areas that got too dark. And I am mixing water in with my paint to thin it out so that it's not too thick. Now, if you're going to paint this straight in oils without doing the acrylic underpainting, I would do it mostly the same, only instead of painting the whole background black like I did, I would have drawn out the giraffe first and then painted around it. With oils, it dries so slowly that you've got time to do that and paint around your subject, so you don't have to wait for the whole background to dry before you block in your first sections of the subject. With acrylics, because it dries so fast, it's easier just to layer it like I've done here. For this section that I'm doing, with all of the detail in the draft, this I would do exactly the same in oil as I'm doing in acrylic now. Adding in some of my details here. Still using that number three paintbrush, the number three round. Remember when you're using a brush like this, the harder you push, the thicker your line is going to be. If you want very thin lines, just barely let the tip of that brush touch your canvas. I've also got a fair amount of water mixed in with that as well so that the paint flows smoothly. As always, it's very important to pay attention to the direction of your brush strokes. If you're going to let them show, make sure that they're going in the right direction. On this piece, I want a very, very high contrast in the lights and darks on my giraffe. And it's easier to do this in the two tones like I've done here. I do recommend when you paint like this, switch your colored photograph into black and white so that you can better judge your values before you start painting. And if you're interested in painting this guy yourself, this is my own reference photo, so I can give you permission to go ahead and paint it for your own purposes for learning how to paint. Over on my website, I will have a actual line drawing so you can draw it out yourself. Now I'm starting in oil paints here. I've got a lot of liquid. Liquid is the mixing medium that I use. Some people use linseed oil. I use liquid. It's a fast drying medium. So what I paint today will be done or dried by tomorrow so I can work on my next layer very, very quickly. I'm using burnt sienna with some raw sienna and a little bit of orange and a whole lot of liquid, more liquid than paint. I wanna be able to see through the paint that I'm applying here. I'm softening those edges out just a bit with a stiff brush. 
I'm adding raw sienna right over the shadowed areas of the light portions of the giraffe. I'm using a little bit of blue for some of the shadowed areas. I'll come back through and hype up the blue later. I'm adding brighter white over the brightest parts of the giraffe's face, mostly around the eye and his cheek. Now, as you can see, that ear is way too bright. I'm Even though it's that bright in the photo, I need to tone that down because it's drawing attention away from his face. So later on, I will end up glazing some magenta and orange into that ear just so that it's not so bright. Now, this is day two of glazing. I'm darkening everything up again, brightening up some of the orange and brown tones. I let the first layer dry overnight. You can see I'm really starting to hype up the contrast in the shadowed areas now, getting my darks a lot darker. And this makes my whites appear to be that much brighter. Now one tip I have for you is if you start creating mud, all your colors are mushing together too much, let it dry before you work on your next layer. This will help avoid that problem of muddy paint that people complain about so often with oils. Now all my details are already in there from having done the underpainting, so this is really just an issue of correcting color and values for me here and contrast. There's not a ton of detail work to do. I am coming back through and adding a little bit more detail into the fur on the horns and on the face, but not a whole lot is needed. I don't want to add too many strands of hair or it'll make him look way too fluffy. While a fluffy giraffe might be adorable, that is not what I'm going for here. The big thing to watch out for when you are glazing is to use a lot of your mixing medium. Make the paint very, very thin so that you can see all of the details underneath. All I'm really trying to do is tint the colors here. I don't want to add any white or any titanium white anyway, any opaque whites into my paint. Otherwise, I'm no longer glazing. I'm just painting opaque colors. In order to glaze and have translucent colors, you've got to use the a lot of your mixing medium and colors that are very translucent. And whichever brand of paint you're using, they should be marked on the label if they are a very transparent or a very opaque color. I'm using the zinc white over the lighter areas of his spots to lighten them up. That is a transparent white. I let that dry and now I'm for my last day of glazing, I'm really darkening everything up. I'm using quite a bit more magenta and I'm outlining everything with a pale blue. And that is it for this guy. Let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to head over to my website where the line drawing is available if you wanna paint this for yourself. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you guys now, complete with voiceover. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists, and sometimes now art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. So you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'm really glad it did not take long to record the intro for this video because this sweater is really hot. Plus, I'm still wearing my pajama bottoms. No, seriously, look, they're sheep. Well, I don't know if you can see the sheep on my knee, but they're sheep. Lisa, why was it you decided to become an artist? Was there a statement you wanted to make to the world? Yeah, no, I really just wanted a job where I could wear my pajamas all day.